welcome to another episode of Epic Events. My name is Candace Davis, and I'm the Director of Event Programming and Creative Services here at VFairs. So excited that you joined us today. I have a special guest. He goes by the name of Tom McMahon. He's the CEO of MCM, which is a digital marketing agency. And today, we're going to be talking about TikTok. So if you are new to TikTok, if you haven't started or if you haven't engaged in TikTok yet, this is your show. Tom, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you so much for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, so excited for you to be on here. When I was talking with you and your team uh, and talking about some of the things that we're gonna get in today, I am just uh, so excited to dive into this information. I know I've heard from a lot of event planners and organizers out there who are trying to get more attendance to events, trying to promote better, trying to use social media and digital marketing better. And this is their show. So uh, would love to dive into that soon. What do you think? Amazing. Yeah, I can't wait. As, as you say, it's a really exciting platform, lots of opportunities. So yeah, looking forward to getting some of the details and hopefully there'll be some really useful kind of tips and tricks that um, everyone listening can take away. Yeah, I can't wait. So before we dive in, let's talk a little bit about you and what you do as CEO at MCM. So where are you located in the world? And tell us kind of what your role and day-to-day -day looks like at MCM. So I'm located uh, just outside London in the UK. And my role within the business is, I guess, you know, keeping things on track, um, you know, maintaining our vision for the business, where we want to be going for the next month, quarter, five, 10, 15, 20 years, and so on. Um, so yeah, that's the main part of my role of kind of, you know, where we take us as an agency. Um, and then alongside that, something that's very um, important to me within the business is the culture and the culture that we kind of um, cultivate within the agency, which, um, you know, goes hand in hand with absolutely everything that we do, whether it be the performance or output, what we're delivering for our clients, or just the overall happiness within the team. Um, that's a really big part of my role as well and something that I'm super passionate so about. Um, so yeah, that's what I do. And then in terms of the agency, as you say, we're a digital marketing agency. Um, we've been around for 25 years now, which we're always very proud of saying is a couple of years older than Google, which is um, pretty good going for a, an agency that specializes in digital marketing. And as a business, we specialize in the events industry. So as a digital marketing agency, we specialize in getting people to attend events and to be aware of events and to attend um, by harnessing all of the different platforms and options and stuff that are out there. Great. Well, thank you for the intro. And uh, I listened to a couple of uh, podcasts that you did around this topic of TikTok, and you really are kind of like the subject matter expert um, in this field, just with what you're doing in digital marketing and being an agency out there. Also, congratulations on, um, you know, all these years with MCM and uh, really founding and CEO the business and also uh, the company culture that you really stand by. I feel that when I was talking with your team. Um, so it's very contagious and I really appreciate that. Um, so thank you. Um, before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, just the beginning of TikTok and how a lot of event planners out there are still trying to get their feet wet and trying to figure out if they really want to, you know, dabble in TikTok or should they just stay on LinkedIn? Should they stay on Facebook? Is Facebook a thing of the past? Instagram, is that still cool or is that a thing in the past? So I first wanted to get your, uh, your take on that before we really dive into this tool. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, I think all of the things that you've touched on there are things that we hear day in, day out. Um, I think we can start off by saying that TikTok is still definitely the shiny, the, the new platform that's still coming onto the scene. It's, you know, it is well established and it is impactful, but I wouldn't say that it's quite set to replace Meta, you know, your Facebook and your Instagrams or YouTube or anything like that. What it can do really well is work really nicely alongside those other platforms and also bring in a, quite a, a fun new spin to what you're doing um, and also deliver against um, your objectives as well. So it is one, a platform that I really recommend that if anyone hasn't tried it for whatever, for whatever the objective might be, um, to give it a go. It's one of those ones that can be, um, you know, quite l a low amount of effort to, to sample, um, but can be 
really high reward in terms of what you can get from it. So um, in terms of benchmarking it against the other platforms, something that is really interesting on TikTok, if you're thinking about running paid advertising, is the cost. So that's where it's really starting to come into its own, where it's um, currently a third of the cost of Meta. So as I say, you know, Facebook and Instagram, it's a third of the cost to advertise on TikTok. And that's because as a platform, they're really trying to burst onto the scene. They're trying to, you know, get advertisers onto the platform. And um, the easiest way of doing that is with cost. So part of one of the reasons that I would, you know, encourage people to give it a go is because that cost isn't going to stay at that price point for very long. Um, you know, I've, you know, we've watched every single platform as soon as it's kind of joined the mix, start off with low costs, bring advertisers in, pull those costs up. So for now, Whilst those costs are low, I'd really recommend just giving it a go, finding out if it's going to resonate, find out if it's going to work, um, because it will be and is already starting to be the platform that people are looking back on and going, oh, I wish I was doing that three months yeah. ago, six months ago, last year. And that will be the case in three months, six months and a year's time. And, you know, that was kind of the example that I give with VFairs. Uh, we have a TikTok now, which is really exciting. So go follow us on TikTok. Um but it's kind of like where the team is coming together. We're, we're figuring out what content we want to go on TikTok. Some of these webcasts, little blurbs are going up there, the snippets from these videos that we have too. So I'm sure one of these that we're doing right now will be up on TikTok at some point um, in the next month. And um, one thing that I've been wanting to do, this is kind of funny, but you know, you see it on Instagram, just my personal account on Instagram. I don't have a TikTok. So if I do see TikTok videos for my personal account, it's through Instagram. And uh, maybe one day I'll get around to doing a video, you know, through our TikTok account with VFairs. But I've always wanted to do one of those videos where you point at the screen like this and there's like text and then you do this kind of thing, you know, yeah. have you, have you done one of those? Yeah, we've done a few of those. We've done them for different clients. We've done them ourselves. I think that is a perfect example of where TikTok is really different as a platform, because imagine if, you know, just a few years ago, you were thinking about, you know, how can I make a video? that is going to go um, in front of my audience, that is going to describe what I do and different bits of information, you'd probably be thinking about, right, we might have to commission a videographer and we're going to have to go and find somewhere interesting to shoot. And we're going to have to write a script and we have to think some music. Now someone can sit with a, you know, hold a phone propped up against their laptop, probably stand up and point at different reasons about whatever. And that takes 20 seconds, post it, and that could be, millions and millions of views instantly and i think that's what's really exciting about the platform it isn't high production it isn't something that requires a huge amount of planning or a huge amount of thought to go into it you can sit down and create five of those similar videos leveraging trends um and you know they could you could get some really big results from them which is you know really exciting yeah and for event organizers out there who want to start with TikTok, um, let's say they have an account, they really don't know what to do next. Where would you say for them to even start if they want to promote an event? Let's say an event's coming up in the next couple of months. They're trying to get, you know, capture more leads. They're trying to capture more sponsors. They're trying to capture more audience and registrants. Where would you say they should start? It's a great question. I think for us, it always comes back to um, audience first. So get a really clear idea of who your target audience are and what do their feeds look like. That's that's the absolute key. So get a really good understanding of what your target audience are currently seeing on their feed. What are they interacting with? What are they commenting on? You know, go down to the event. And, you know, the first thing that we do at any event we work on is we'll attend as much of the different bits as possible and we'll speak to people on the floor at the event and really get a good idea of, who are they following? What are they interested in? What gets them excited? And then you start to paint a really nice picture of what is filling their feed. And then that's where you can create your content. So all of the content needs to be curated for your target audience. As I said, there's no better way of understanding what your target audience wants to see than, you know, going and speaking to them. Um, you know, we've had some really interesting examples of that where, you know, with the, the a big event we're working on in the world of accountancy, right? And it's all of the leading accountancy firms and accountants that are attending this event. And there was one idea around what type of content these people wanted to see. And that was slightly disconnected from what type of content those people were actually consuming. And it was understanding 
what are they actually consuming and how can we make content around that? And that's from getting the insight. And then once you've got an idea of what's filling their feeds, creating your own content around that, that's really compelling, really engaging, um, and really delivers against some of the objectives and the messages that you're kind of uh, trying to portray. Wow. Okay. Well, you know, start there, know your audience and, you know, see what they're following and kind of what they're interested in so they can focus on the content that you have and hopefully watching it and sharing it, things like that. But um, that's great. Thank you so much, Tom. For for tips, I know you're full of TikTok tips. Mm -hmm. um, so wanted to kind of get your take on all the tips that you wanted to lay out for, for our discussion now. And um, interesting to see like where this takes, because I know every single day, something's always changing with technology and apps and how to use them, new features that are coming along to TikTok, which I, I love to follow all the new features, especially on Instagram and all the different social media channels. But um, wanted to ask you about your tips and then maybe do you keep up with TikTok features, uh, new ones that are coming along the line? I'm sure that you probably use those, you know, for clients and promotions and things like that, but you'd probably be the person to ask for this. Yeah, exactly. So I guess, yeah, well, there's probably um, four um, pieces of advice I would give. I think the first one going to your point around trends. Um, me personally, I spend way too much time on the platform. And I think a lot of the team would agree, but it's kind of essential to stay um, up to speed with all of the trends that are going on. There's a new trend every hour, every day. And it's those ones that if you can latch onto as they're kind of, you know, increasing in popularity, it could be really, really impactful. So um, that probably the first tip is to keep an eye on trends and have a think around um, how they can be useful for what it is that you're trying to say. So, um, you know, Kenneth, you mentioned that you don't have a account yourself. I'd probably recommend don't don't get one because otherwise it's going to suck up a huge amount of your time, right? It is one of those ones that the feed will instantly curate all of this content that is tailored for you. Um, and it's very, you know, lots of interesting stuff on there. So from a business point of view, great. From a personal point of view, you're probably sacrificing a good chunk of your relaxing time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think identifying those trends and working out how to leverage those is really, really useful. Um, and then going to a little bit more of the, technical details of how to actually create that content. Um, it doesn't always have to be super short. There's no kind of um, fixed duration of, um, you know, what's going to be the best. What I would do is, you know, trial with different durations, but the key to keep consistently throughout is um, having a hook up front. So, you know, we're all scrolling on all platforms incredibly quickly, too quickly, right? And I think you've you've got literally a second, two seconds up front to hook someone, to make them pause, to make them stop scrolling. So it's finding out what you're going to do in that initial few seconds to grab someone's interest and get them to stay in there. So, um, yeah, that's a, another interesting tip. And I guess within that as well, within that initial getting something up front, creating content on the platform doesn't need to be, or it shouldn't be the same as on any other platform. It shouldn't be the same as, if you're creating a TV ad or a YouTube ad or anything like this, where it might be a little bit more creative and focused. Um, the advice from TikTok themselves is to create TikToks, not ads. So mm -hmm. it is literally around making content like um, a user. So, you know, focused on user generated style content that feels quite native and natural for the platform. So yeah, that'd be another one, getting the hook up front and making TikToks, not ads that would probably be um, the second one that I'd recommend. And third one, I would say this runs at kind of the heart of our um, creative studio within the agency, everything that we make. We put it against the test of um, these three principles of think, feel, and do. So everything that we're making, how is that gonna make you think when you've seen it? How's it gonna make you feel? And how, what's it gonna make you do? And that needs to be applied to everything. And that, I wouldn't say it's specific for TikTok, but it is really important because it is a platform, as I've mentioned, around creating the quite fun content where people can get carried away and you see a piece of content and you think, well, oh, okay, that was great, but why am I going to now attend this event? Or as an exhibitor, why am I going to inquire? Or why am I going to, you know, book on a, as a registration, et cetera. So that think, feel, and do is really important. So how's it going to make your target audience think, feel, and do? Um, that should run throughout. And once you can answer 
all of those questions or even an even better test, put your piece of content in front of someone, you know, ideally, you know, wh whoever, someone that hasn't seen it before and ask them how it's made them think, feel and what they would do afterwards. If they can, you know, take off some fairly similar answers to what you'd expected um, and what you're looking for it to achieve, then that's going to be a success and something that you can then look to post on the platform. And then a final one, a little bit of a controversial one, and this is the only platform that it would work on, but you know, you often hear, especially when creating content that less is more, and it's, mm -hmm. it's more important. Unfortunately on TikTok at the moment, it's the opposite. More is more, you know, you focus on getting the best production or anything polished or spot on, or focus on getting as much content out there um, and working out which of those is effective. So you can then look at the platform, you run your own report. So it doesn't even need to be as complex as that. You'll get a good idea of how many comments does this get, or how many views has this got, how many shares, etc. cetera. Um, and then you can start to refine and go, okay, well, those ones where we use this trending sound worked really well, or those ones where we actually involve some of the team just speaking about, oh, this could be anything silly, like, I don't know, whatever it might be that that's works really well because people like the human connection and then you can start to refine and okay we're gonna make more of that content but um with it still being quite a youthful platform in the grand scheme of things um isn't yet completely saturated with content so there is room for trial and error so um yeah that's the kind of the last tip i would say is to um put as much stuff out there as many different routes as possible and then flip through and find out what's worked well, and then uh, create more of that. That's great. I love your principles of think, fill, and do. And uh, and then more is more. You, you, like, you, you, like, you don't really hear that a whole lot, right? Even an event that's like, yeah, let, let's come down on decorations for the conference room and food and beverage and all these sorts, sorts of things. Um, but yeah, TikTok, I mean, go all out, right? Do something crazy, uh, like confetti cannons. I think that's what I'm, I might do for one of our VFairs TikTok videos. You have inspired me, Tom. Um, but it, are there any things that really stick out to you with TikTok videos that you've seen around promoting events that really helps to boost attendance, like something crazy that's happened in the TikTok video or something very simple and straightforward that kind of gets, gets, you know, viewers and, and, and eyes on? Yeah, it's a real mix. I think we find, so we focus, as I said, we'll go and create huge amounts of content um, at, at an event and then post it and see how it works. Sometimes the things that we think are going to work, work. So like we were at an event recently and there was this really cool um, display with bubbles where people were getting caught in bubbles and there was a guy doing magic tricks with these bubbles popping off and we made some content around that and that performed incredibly well. Um, often if there's like, you know, a really interesting stand or something really interesting, like you mentioned around the confetti can and things like that, you know, will often do really well. But um, two other things that we found working really well at the moment with um, events content and TikTok and things that anyone can do with a phone and just walking around. The first one is a time-lapse of literally hit record on your phone and doing a lap of the event. And then you can put like, um, some commentary on it around, you know, um, attend the X event with me in 30 seconds and a bit of narration around, okay, here's this section and here's that and here's this. We're seeing this really, really perform. And it's because it's quite simple, right? That someone can look at that and get a really good idea of what's going on, everything that's in the event in 30 seconds. Um, and it's quite a lazy way to find out everything that's going on. And when you go back to the think, feel and do, so you're thinking, oh, actually, there's more at that event than I thought. You're probably feeling like maybe I'm missing out on, you know, not being there and there's all this cool stuff. And then you're doing, going and signing up to the event. So that's something that I'd recommend anyone just give a try, you know, simple um, time lapse around the event that you can just do on your phone. Um, and then the other one is doing short and quite fun and light interviews with people at the event. So people like people and people like seeing who's there and who's doing what and what do they feel about being there and, you know, just grab an iPhone, head down, chat to some people, chat to some um, people that are visiting, chat to some people that are exhibiting, you know, what's the most interesting thing that they've had a discussion around today or 
what was their favorite thing about the event or you know some really you get some really interesting sound bites around um have you been one of our favorite questions is um have you attended this event before and often you find someone like yeah this is the 12th time i've been and it's straight away it's so, okay why do you keep coming back and then whatever comes next is incredibly powerful and something that again would be really useful as a nice sound but a nice clip so those are a few ways in that I would really recommend. Again, this doesn't require a camera crew, a big mic, uh, whatever. Um, it's good to make sure the audio is, yeah, it's, it's great to make sure the audio is good quality. Um, I guess a simple uh, recommendation, I would say, if you were at an event that was really, really busy, I'd recommend getting some, get these mini like um, lapel mics, Bluetooth ones. You can buy them online for not too expensive at all, whatever I think, that just clip onto the collar and you can just guarantee that um, the audio will be good quality. Again, that's a bit of a technicality. You don't always need to do that, but that's probably the extent of um, investment in like big production that I'd recommend for these types of things. Um, it's more about what the content is rather than yeah, being, being big produced or um, polished. So low investment big ROI if you do it right. But yeah. these are really simple and straightforward tips. Love the time-lapse video because I think sometimes post-event, because I assume a lot of this content is going out live or it's going out post-event. Um, and you're creating that FOMO. And we talk about that a lot on this podcast is creating FOMO, creating that, you know, scarcity, creating that, hey, if you don't join, you're going to miss out on this because it really is true, you know, and people want to see before they actually do. And that's a big thing that we, you know, talk about and back a lot here. So that is really great. Love, love, love those tips. Um, I want to ask you now, those are things to do before we end the show. Let's talk about things to actually avoid when using TikTok, because we probably could go on all day. You could probably give me all kinds of tips of not what to do um, and then the tips of what to do. But I want to talk about uh, what have you seen to avoid? Things to avoid. It's a yeah, it's a tricky one. I think it's so. It's, I'd say the platform's so nuanced that um, there wouldn't be like one thing that isn't going to work for everyone. I think some it would probably be getting disheartened if the content doesn't work. That's probably the, I know that's like you know a bit of a, a cheap answer, right? But um, I would say that you know if you post 10, 10 posts, twenty posts, and they haven't worked. Don't get disheartened. There is still going to be opportunity in there. It could be that 21st one that you're going to post 22nd. It could blow up and really do well. Um, again, not investing too much in, in one piece of content. Um, yeah, can't stress enough that it's really about frequency and it's getting a, much of a kind of variety in there and doing lots of, yeah, lots of different bits that's yeah really going to help. But in terms of other things, I'm trying to think of um, things not to do. I guess that kind of runs at the heart of the platform is that there isn't really much to like not to do. It is really about experimenting, trying different things. Um, as long as you've got that good understanding of your target audience, then chances are the, the content is really going to be able to resonate. Um, I guess what not to do is imagine and, and second guess what kind of content your target audience wants to see and instead speak to them and, and test it out and find out exactly what kind of bits they are resonating with and um yeah and really want to find out more on um a final one just to touch on actually just on that in terms of what not to do again not to second guess the demographic that are on the platform so something that we hear time and time again is you know this is a platform for teenagers or people in their own 20s it's not going to be relevant for my audience is a something we hear over and over um but the, that is changing rapidly, like seriously, seriously quick. So um, the demographic, you know, there is still about 25% of, of people that are aged, you know, below um, 25 and then another similar split just above that. But there is a really quickly, that demographic is um, moving into the 30s to 40s, 40s to 50s and 50s plus. Um, and we shouldn't be surprised at that because we've seen that happen on Facebook and then we saw it happen on Instagram, and then we saw it happen on Twitter and YouTube. Like that's always going to be the case. You're going to have the early adopters as the younger generation, and then that demographic is going to shift. So for that reason, I would say don't don't count out the platform as not being relevant. 
um, instead test it out and determine, okay, that's definitely not right. We're still yet to see an industry um, that there isn't some way in, you know, on, on the platform, you know, with some type of content. So yeah, I'd say don't discredit it, give it a go and find out um, because it, it really will be the one, if not, you know, fully explored that people will look back on and think, oh, I wish I'd have just, you know, tested that out or um, yeah, yeah, explored. Good, good, good. You talked about frequency. That's a great question that I wanted to throw at you. Um, so event planners may say, well, how often do I need to do this? Is this going to be pretty cumbersome throughout the week? Can, can I do one a week? Can I do a couple of months? What would be your take? I mean, you you are the subject matter expert around, you know, digital, you know, uh, promotion and then for TikTok too. So what's your advice on this? That's a really interesting question because you see a huge amount of answers on this online. Like, you know, even last night I was watching various different bits of content and you have a lot of creators that are saying quite aggressively, right, you need to be posting 10 times a day. And if you're not posting 10 times a day, and yes, that's all well and good. If I don't know, you're 18 and you're a student and that's all you're doing, sure. What I would say is the best frequency is just as much as you realistically can. Like, you know, um, building inconsistency is good. What I would do is look at a month and work out how many pieces of content you're re realistically going to be able to make in a month and then work out a consistency. If you're going to post that, I don't know, every Wednesday afternoon, you're going to post something and then you're also going to post something on a Friday afternoon and a Monday morning. And then try and keep to that consistency because that can often help as well with the algorithm as you're uploading. Um, but I, yeah, I don't agree. Yes, if it's possible to post loads, then go for it. But I would actually say that, you know, finding out a consistency that's going to work for you long term is going to be better than, um, you know, a quick fix that someone's going to try and do in a week. It's a bit, a bit like anything, like I guess healthy eating or something instead of just going on some super strict. I don't know, juice diet for like three days that you're going to forget about. It's probably going to be better to over six months be like, okay, well, actually, I'm just going to be a bit healthier and have this here and there and stuff. So, um, yeah, I would say, yeah, identify the, the amount of content that you can make, as much content as you can realistically make, and then plan out a bit of a posting schedule over the next couple of months um, for organic. And then I guess if you're looking at running paid advertising, it's a little bit different where I would, you know, just run some content organically, find out which of those perform well, and then pick out just a small handful, two or three of those ads, which have already shown on organic platforms that resonate with your audiences um, or resonate with your audiences, and then run those with a small amount of boosting budget. Um, and then again, you, you know, that's already good content. And then you can have a look at which are performing strongly and, um, you know, go from there. Great. Wow. These are really amazing tips, Tom. Thank you so, so much for adding these in, uh, what to do, what not to do. And then probably some things you haven't heard if you're out there, um, you know, using TikTok at the moment, but before we end the show, is there anything else that you want to tell our audience or leave with them? Um, Anything else at all? I would say, uh, you know, I've, I've, obviously I've just spoken there about all of the importance of TikTok and how brilliant it is. Um, I would definitely say it's still one to watch as a platform. This, I'm, I'm absolutely no way saying, right, this is it. TikTok is the platform for the next 10 years. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity to be had on the platform. But I've really, uh, really encourage people to use it alongside the tried and tested ones. You know, don't just put all your eggs into TikTok. I would say instead, don't miss the opportunity, try it out. But, you know, Facebook is still going to be really powerful. Instagram, Twitter, all of those ones. I would still encourage using those at the same time. Um, something else, I guess, just to leave listeners with would be um, around the style of content, which is currently on TikTok. Although I'm not certain that TikTok is going to be the platform of the future, I am pretty confident that that type of content is around to stay. Whether, you know, and by that, I mean vertical short form video that's quite low production, that is really um, fixed in on what people want to see. Um, I think that is definitely going to be around for a long time, whether or not it ends up eventually living on YouTube shorts or Instagram reels or a different platform because of whatever reason. Um, 
Yeah, so I wouldn't say TikTok is the one that, you know, if someone quotes this to me in 20 years, you said, right, this is it. I definitely, I wouldn't say that's the case, but what we're pretty certain on is that this type of content um, is around to stay for a long time and definitely something that people should, um, yeah, really consider. Um, but yeah, for now, it's, it's, it's the platform to test out. Um, but yeah, long term, it's a good way to you know, think about how to capture content um, and always keeping that audience as the key focus um, and yeah, test and learn, find out what works, etc. But yeah, all of those learnings can be um, spread out across different platforms and different ways of digital marketing for sure. Great. Well, well said. And I am really looking forward to hearing how many of you event planners and organizers out there listening will tackle TikTok finally and, you know, help build excitement around your events for, for this year. So, um, Tom, it's been a pleasure having you on. Thank you so, so much. And before we end the episode, I want to have our listeners hear where they can actually find you and connect. Sure. Well, yeah, first of all, thanks so much for having me on. It's a real pleasure. Yeah, really. Yeah, really enjoyed catching up and going through those bits. Um, in terms of reaching out, so if anyone would like to discuss any of these bits further or simply just have a chat about anything in the world of digital marketing, you can reach out at hello at mcm.click, C-L-I-K, um, or you can just reach out directly to me on LinkedIn. Always happy to connect and um, yeah, have a chat if there's anything else that we can discuss. Wonderful. Thank you again, Tom. Maybe we can have a part two of this and, you know, maybe there's a whole slew of TikTok features that are coming in the next, you know, six months or year that we can have a part two. And then uh, maybe at that point, there will be some sort of other, you know, app that's come out that we can talk about too. So I look forward to that. Um, many thanks to all of you listening out there. Please reach out to us if you have any questions. would love to hear um, what you'd like to hear next on the podcast. We have many more episodes that are on their way, so stay tuned. And if you want to chat with us here at Fairs, we would love to hear from you. Just simply send us an email at sales at bfairs.com and we will be happy to help you there. But until next time, peace, love, events. Thanks, everyone. Bye.